Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar um, about uh, the new version of IFS uh, Food. I'm very pleased to welcome Krisa um, Dimitriadis, Technical Director of IFS, who will uh, share with us uh, the latest news uh, of, the, of the standard. So, uh, welcome, welcome, Krisa. Hello, nice hello, Bruno. Hello, everybody. I'm um, also very pleased to be here. <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, it's also a bit special because uh, what pr not all, all people know is that actually we started almost seven years ago together at IFS. On the same and, day, uh, that's true. The same day. I was privileged to, to have the possibility to hire Krista <laughs> <laughs> from, from IFS. And we started on the, on the same day. And... Uh, Krista was a food engineer. She has a master in uh, food microbiology. Uh, she did two years um, uh, in a laboratory a certification body before joining uh, the IFS. And uh, she was so brilliant that uh, after some years, she became a technical director of IFS, uh, leading 16 people a team across across countries, inter international team, uh, the the IFS development, the IFS Academy, and you're also leading the the French working group, the international working group. So we'll talk about the the international side of uh, of IFS, and uh, yeah, it's really a pleasure a pleasure to to have you uh, with us today. Thank you, Bruno. So what? Are we going to talk about, uh, of course, <laughs> about, <laughs> sorry, we're just looking, oh, we have uh, people from oh. Belgium, from Spain, from France. Hello from France, actually. We are based both in yeah, France. We have a, a colleague from Greece. Oh, Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an international... Um, Italy, international audience, and we have more than 500 people subscribing to this uh, to this webinar. So the, the interest uh, is there uh, definitely for for new version of, of standard like uh, um, like IFS. Oh, that's incredible. Now we have also from uh, with Sa hello Sarah, hello Manuel from Spain, people I know, Celine from France. <laughs> nice to have you all there. Paulo from Ecuador, we have uh, Nafise from Iran, Tunisia, oh. so it's an uh, international um, audience. That's why we chose, uh, we chose English, <laughs> rightfully. Yes. So a lot of people want to know about, um, uh, about the new version, but I think it's interesting to know a bit more about IFS because some, sometimes it's something that got forgotten a bit the the DNA uh, of the of the standards where it comes from. So, could you please uh, tell us, uh, Krista, a mm -hmm. bit about IFS? What 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 is IFS? Where what did it started? And yes, let's uh, start from the start, yeah. <laughs> from the beginning. Uh, thank you, Bruno. Uh, so yes, IFS started uh, in two thousand and two. Uh, and has two uh, shareholders, the HDE, which is the German uh, Retailer Federation, and the FCD, the French Retailer Federation. And the first standard that was launched uh, was the IFS Food Standard, which is the main uh, standard for IFS. It was published, several versions followed, and several standards as well. Today, we have six standards and four programs. And mm -hmm. uh, we are working with different working groups. Uh, we have five national working groups. So we, we are really, um, uh, this is very important to us to have really exchange with stakeholders, retailers, industry members, certification bodies in their language. So we have the French working group, the Spanish, the Italian, uh, the German and the Polish. So uh, these are the five national working groups. We are working with a very big network. We have more than 2,000 retailers worldwide uh, working together. Uh, we are really exchanging and deciding together about the rules in the standards. And we have a network of 120 certification bodies with uh, 1,250 auditors who, who are qualified according to very specific rules 
we have written exams and oral exams, which is a difference in comparison to other. Uh, yeah, I think IFS is the only standard that has this oral exam where we can say that IFS actually sees 100% of the auditors themselves. Exactly. And in the, uh, the examiners, we, we pay attention as well. Uh, there are experts, there are also retailers being there. So this is an important aspect to see really the audit, audit, auditors' uh, uh, capacities in listening, uh, in yes, uh, trying to uh, uh, choose the right questions uh, during mm -hmm. the audit. Okay. Um, yes. Of course, uh, IFS is not alone, but in uh, international uh, international context, right? With uh, different kinds of recognition and accreditations. Exactly. In terms of international recognition, the benchmark, the GFSI benchmark for the four uh, standards, IFS Food Broker, Logistics and the Pack Secure for packaging. We are also EA member, um, IAF uh, members, and we signed very recently uh, the MLA for the IFS Food version 7 and version 8. We are very happy about that. And we cooperate also with authorities. This is also very interesting to us uh, to cooperate with the public sector for uh, with some countries in France, in the Netherlands, Romania, Sweden, uh, Swedish uh, authorities as well. And we exchange some information which really increase the trust also uh, in the standard uh, and, and for the companies can reduce the frequency of their inspections too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is also something I think to, we should say that uh, not all the, the standards are recognized by uh, food safety authorities. <clears throat> there are a few of them, and one of them is, is IFS. It's, it's a big path to, to uh, achieve this, and it really depends also about how the authorities are really built up, because it's different from countries to countries. Uh, but uh, this is really an, an important achievement. Yeah. And, and also, I think it's, it's also in the part of the, the trend to say, how can I use... Uh, third-party certification uh, as a way to to adapt my resources based on risk mm -hmm. uh, and and maybe focus the resources for the food safety authorities on more risky businesses or or um, and I think it's it's, it's really va very valuable for also for some countries which have limited mm -hmm. maybe all it's the case for all the countries but which have uh, uh, that have limited resources in terms of inspection. Uh, Yes, so I think it's, a, it's a great, uh, great achievement. Anyway, anyhow, in terms of structure, can you tell us a bit? Uh, well, you, you mentioned uh, the, the shareholders, but what yes. are all the groups that? that uh... Yes, exactly. This is part of the strength as well of IFS because uh, we have the two shareholders in the board uh, where all the strategic decisions are taken. We have a main representative of uh, a main retailers representative and industry companies as well. And we have in a more technical level uh, what we call the International Technical Committee. And in this committee, we have also retailers, industries, certification bodies from, uh, our, from our main countries. So French, uh, Italian, German, Sp Spain, um, uh, uh, and yes, which one I forgot? German, French, yeah. Spain, Italian. Yeah. Italian. Uh, and uh, we have also the national uh, working groups. We have the Polish, uh, uh, which joined also the working groups. And we have specialized working groups for the exams, for example. So developing really with a panel of experts, uh, the content of uh, the written exams, oral exams. This is also a, a huge work performed there. A specialized working group with the certi some uh, main certification bodies. This is also important. And the quality assurance working group uh, from the uh, integrity program part. We have mm. some uh, integrity program auditors and, and uh, there is also a specialized group about that. Yeah. So I think for me, what's, what struck me when I was at IFS is that already at the board, that in the strategic decisions of the IFS, you already have food manufacturers not only retailers, because it's a shareholders are retailers, but already at the, at the board level, you have a representative, as, as you said, from, from food manufacturers and from different countries. So that makes it a very... Exactly. Very it's, it's, a, it's a strength because we really have op, uh, opportunity to have both uh, op, uh, opinions, both sides' mm -hmm. opinions. Uh, it can also be a challenge, of course, uh, because uh, different cultures, uh, uh, but this is, uh, I would say, what makes really the strength of IFS. 
IFS. You mean that uh, doing uh, uh, one version per year IFS requires a lot of work? <laughs> of course, they, uh, uh, I think uh, indeed version 8 was the faster review we have ever uh, made, but uh, yes, it's always a big work um, behind. Of course. But in, indeed, and in national working groups also, you have to imagine, I think that uh, it's not just a regional people representative of big companies and so on. There are really people from these countries in the different uh, sectors contributing to the evolution of, of, the, of the standard and giving their, they have also the right to, yeah, to, to, to give their comments. And, and then it's your, the hard work for you and for your team to make the summary and to propose uh, to the... And to combine the, <laughs> everything, and combine exactly. And, the best of the, the different worlds. No, brilliant. Um, and of course, this network, you yes. mentioned it. This uh, is uh, yeah, one of our favorite uh, slides because this shows really the, the big network with, we have because all those companies are members of our working groups and they also agreed to, to that we put this uh, lo their logo on this slide. And it shows really, uh, yes, that we have three different type of stakeholders, as I said before, retailers, industry certification bodies from different countries. So this is really something we are proud about. So you didn't pay them to put their names on it? No, they really are for sure who are not. <laughs> no, you can cross-check the information. <laughs> no, no, I trust you fully. No, it, I think it's also interesting. It's not just a uh, company who like IFS so there are people who are participating yes yes exactly uh, companies More seriously who are participating in uh, the... all those people uh, we have really uh, contact with them they participate in our working groups and we really uh, try to make their uh, voice heard hmm. that's uh, really, I must say that I am actually I'm I think more than 20 I'm 15 years uh, busy with IFS, and the first impression that I had with IFS is that it was the the first standard that we really listened to the um, to the users. Um, it was at that time Stephanie Lemaitre in a conference who uh, talked to, talk to me, and and I think it's, it's something else also that we can say. I hope you. you yeah, I, I fully agree. Know that, yeah. that really, if you have any question, anything about the IFS, uh, I think the team of IFS is is happy to. To give answers or try to give answers and, and orientation to the to the users. Of People course, don't... yeah. We have different departments, and uh, according to the different kind of uh, questions, uh, we are always there to support. Great, and you mentioned indeed, indeed the the different uh, yes. standard. Yes, here uh, just we can visualize them. Uh, we have the IFS Food, our main standard, the broker. Uh, the logistics one, uh, which is also developed in the US uh, quite well, the HPC standard, uh, the wholesale cash and carry, which is under review uh, mm -hmm. at the moment. The HPC was published uh, in December uh, and the next one to be published is the logistics in July. So we are expecting a new version for the logistics with uh, quite a few changes because it was an old standard. Yeah. And then we have the, the global markets. Yeah, which is now this sort of a step-by-step -step approach yeah. for not almost all, all the biggest standards, right? Uh, but you have it for for food. We have for it for four. Yes. Yeah, four standards. So it's really a sort of global step-by-step -step approach for the, yes. the, the main standards. It's non-accredited. Uh, we don't have a certificate at the end. We have a letter of confirmation which gives a result and it's a step-by-step -step approach uh, for the continuous improvement of the company. We recommend uh, to achieve the certification after three years, but it really depends also of um, uh, the level of the company and, and uh, the improvement they will achieve. Of course, great. And uh, some figures. So, well, it's you. Yes, that, that's uh, that's always good to put some numbers uh, to better understand uh, the differences between the standards. In terms of audits, uh, last year was uh, yeah a, a big year because we had more than thirty thousand uh, audits uh, assessments performed worldwide, mm -hmm. uh, and the food, as we can see, uh, had uh, more than twenty thousand uh, certificates. Uh, right after we see it's the logistics, the broker. 
Uh, and the same uh, tendency we observe for the global markets where the food is also in the first position uh, and then uh, the logistics and the HPC. So we, huge. yeah. It's not as huge for global markets. Yes, yes. Uh, it really increased. All the numbers are increasing from one year to the other. So it's very positive to see that there are still new uh, new companies getting certified and getting audited. And this is very mm. positive. And with, of course, the, the mission and the, the, the vision yes. of IFS. Yes, uh, yeah, Global the vision. Uh, it's all about <laughs> trust, yes, and product integrity. Mm. So, I think it's no. I think it's for me. It's very important that, to understand where where the the uh, standard comes from. But of course, people are waiting. Uh, they register. There are uh, people online asking, "Okay, when do we talk about uh, <laughs> yes, food version 8? And of course, there is one question that I have to ask you: Is uh, why? Because you know, when there is a new version, especially one year of almost a bit a bit more than oh, one it, year, it, no, it almost two. Years. Almost two. Years, two. Yeah, yes. That's true. But you know, we, we make shortcuts, and for us, it's like. Yeah, and it was the pandemic. I, I can yeah. understand. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so, yeah, why this this new version? So that's, that's I think, uh, interesting. So, what what moved you, moved uh, IFS to say, okay, we need to. We need to do this new version. Yeah, that's a good question uh, to start with food version 8 uh, part. Um, indeed, there were three main questions. Uh, and one very important for us was uh, that the Codex Alimentarius, the, the new version, the latest version, was published really after uh, the version 7 publication. So we couldn't consider the elements in version 7. So we took the opportunity with this uh, new version to um, really reevaluate, uh, especially the chapter 2 in the checklist related to the HACCP. Uh, some also uh, definitions uh, taken, uh, which are in the glossary, uh, exactly the same from the codex. So we really try to align uh, much more uh, with the codex. And we took the opportunity to consider um, the newest publication of the ISO 22003, which is the part 2. Mm -hmm. uh, dedicated for uh, schemes like uh, IFS, uh, which are accredited to 17065. So really the mm -hmm. product and process uh, standard. Uh, and there, there we took also some elements, uh, for example, the audit definition. Mm -hmm. And yes, apart from that, we also took uh, one step back uh, in order to uh, consider what were the difficulties with the previous version. Um, for example, the B scoring, maybe some of you th who are there are familiar with uh, this uh, new uh, definition we introduced with version 7, which was difficult to understand, which I will explain also a bit later. Yeah. Um, and yes, um, the some reporting also difficulties, uh, a lot of um, compulsory fields to fulfill uh, because we have to also have some information in the report for better understanding for uh, every reader of the report. Also, we are obliged uh, also for the GFSI benchmark to have some information in. So um, we tried uh, with this new version to make this process smoother. We have a new software also for reporting. We made a lot, of, yeah, we put a lot of energy and a lot of people worked on this project. And yes, we, we are really confident that this will uh, support the auditors mm. in that work. So, so I think it's true that it's important to to realize that um, changes is also about um, taking into account the feedback from uh, from the users. And I thought it was quite bold to somehow to come back for, for the beast. So that means that indeed you are you are really listening to to the auditors, to the company, to the difficulties, and 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 go back a little bit to to what what it was before, right? The an important exactly yes deviation. Yeah, because we we made also some statistics in the end. B scorings were uh, less and less give, given. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we were observing that more uh, deviations like Cs were given. Um, and for the companies, that was not positive because it was reducing uh, the different uh, uh, levels uh, of yeah. deviations they can have. Of uh, yeah. th there is a panel of... Uh, different colors, uh, gray colors. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not only wh white and black. So uh, with uh, with this definition, it also allows to not 
maybe in some situations, yes, to really point out also the small deviations and, yeah. and not... Uh, yeah, it's not black and white. It's yeah, not black exactly. or white. It's also there is a bit of the gray area and uh, yes. Good. So in in terms of um, changes, so there there are different kind of of aspect, right? In the the, the standard, it's not only about checklists. It's all mm -hmm. all kind of requirements. Yes, it's look? true that the the part two is the one that most mm -hmm. of the people are familiar, the checklist. But we have four parts actually in the standard, the same as in the previous version. Uh, the in the certification protocol, really, the part one, uh, if I could summarize the changes, I would say, first of all, scoring system, as we said, mm -hmm. B-scoring change. Also, some clarifications about the unannounced audits. Uh, mm -hmm. There were questions because we introduced the, the, the rule about at least one audit needs to be unannounced every third audit uh, in version mm -hmm. 7. And yes, we have more experience now with uh, with this rule, and we could uh, make some clarifications and and give uh, more directions about uh, about that. We also discussed about the claims, um, how to make uh, visible in the uh, in the scope of the production, uh, which type of products the company is producing. So I yeah, yeah I think we we will yeah, talk a yeah. bit later about that. Mm -hmm. So just to, to, to say some, some of the, the aspects, one important I would like to take the opportunity here is about part three, because we mm -hmm. won't discuss later. Part three, um, we really tried, uh, we didn't touch the accreditation body's requirements, mainly the, the certification body and auditor's requirements. And as we know, there is a lack of auditors on the market and we tried to consider uh, this difficulty um, and uh, make a smoother path uh, in order to achieve new um, scopes, for example, for auditors, and uh, in the same time, having the same level uh, of the quality we, we expect. Mm -hmm. So it was a challenge, but we I think we found uh, good solutions uh, also for auditors who are already qualified for other schemes. Uh, we, we built some bridges, let's say, uh, from one uh, scheme uh, accredited to 17 or 65 uh, to the other. Mm -hmm. so, so, I, yeah. so what you said about there are not, it's not only about part two, something also that I, mm -hmm. I say in, in the trainings that I think that every company should be aware about all the parts of the standards because there are things that are, uh, you mentioned quality, if I'm auditor competencies, but also how to engage with certification bodies, what are the roles and responsibilities? Yep. And I think it's it's very good to to have this uh, this view, even if you after in the plant, you work specifically on on the part two. But there are, there are elements definitely in in all the parts. Yes. To, to be to be considered. And especially the certification protocol yeah, part one. Course. I mean, it's really about the rules of the audit themselves, and and we still see that there is sometimes um, a lack of uh, understanding or information about this part, and we really insist during our trainings too, uh, yeah. in in order to really have a deeper look uh, in in those rules. Yeah, I think the companies. I fully agree with you. The companies they have to also to know what how, what the process is and what are the what they can do in terms of uh, also even going into appeal if they, there are things that they don't don't understand who they can uh, address it to mm -hmm. and how it works and and the timelines also the timelines are very important obviously yes. uh, in the the different Correct. actions yeah. that you have yes. to to put in the place. action plan yes exactly and so on. Um, so in the certification protocol I think it's as you said no mainly what we wanted to discuss is about the the B. <laughs> The yes. B scoring for the, for yes. The... Some more details about the B scoring. So, as I said, um, it's not anymore a point of attention as in, in version seven. It's now again uh, back to deviation. So, the definition is almost full compliance. It's still 15 points. So, in terms of uh, number of points, it's the same. Mm -hmm. The only difference in comparison to uh, version 6.1 here is that we have corrections and corrective actions requested so we need to have evidence for correction uh, within those four weeks after the receipt of the action plan okay so you, you need you have to do a correction and to propose a corrective action yes that can be a bit uh, with a longer delay uh, no, the delay to propose and to, to complete to the corrections, yes, the, is uh, the same. It's four weeks, 
but uh, the corrective action uh, gives one year in order to, to implement. implement. Okay, yeah, that's, that's the, the, the good point. And for KO, uh, that's uh, something a bit uh, particular. So there is also an, an impact. Right, yes, of course, when we touch the B scoring, it has an impact on the KO requirements. For, for those who may don't know, we have 10 KO requirements in the checklist, which are the uh, essential requirements, for example, about specifications, about internal audits, traceability, those requirements for us are really essential and we wanted to strengthen the importance uh, of those requirements in version 8 uh, by not giving any point in case uh, it was uh, fulfilled partly. Mm -hmm. So even in case uh, it's only partly fulfilled, uh, we give zero points. Uh, it was five um, with a C scoring in version 7. So it's strengthened a little bit. Uh, it becomes a bit, uh, a bit more strict uh, for those 10 requirements scoring, but there is a reason behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> it's always a bit scary, the KO uh, system. But, uh, yes. <laughs> you, learn, you learn to work with it. And you talked about the claims on certificate, which is a bit uh, it's new. I, I know that from my time that that was something that the the companies were asking, right? So when if it's a, yes. a denomination of origin, protecting the PDO or uh, or, the, or other claims, how to put it in the in the product? In this the, was a big discussion, actually, yeah. since years, I, I think, uh, and it was also a request from the retailers because it was difficult, and also from the companies' side because mm -hmm. the companies want also to promote what uh, they are producing. If they produce, for example, I always take this example, but if they produce um, champagne, they want yeah. to tell that this is champagne and not uh, sparkling white yeah. wine. So yeah. um, they they can they can really uh, explain uh, what they produce, but uh, what is really mandatory is to have a disclaimer. On the certificate, it should be written in that case and only for indication schemes, so only for PGO, PDI, mm -hmm. it should be written that the geographical indication scheme, for example, for this example, Champagne, is mm -hmm. an extra sync uh, quality of the products, but its assessment is not covered by uh, the scope of the IFS okay. food certification. Yeah. Because this is not really uh, the the objective of of uh, the IFS uh, food of audit. Course. Of course, there are samples taken, so this can be checked with some samples. Uh, but uh, this uh, is not uh, the the goal of. The yeah, IFS. so it's a, it's a way to recognize what the product is about. But yes. it's true that uh, the denomination is sometimes very very important, um, and other considerations. But of course, precising that it's not uh, the auditor is not going to check this uh, specifically. It's not, it's, as mm -hmm. you say, it's not the goal of the audit to exactly to have this to claim to to verify these claims. Ah, and there is a new star status. Mm -hmm. Something. <laughs> Yes, it sounds uh, attractive when we yeah. see it, and it is actually. At least we want to make it attractive. Um, what we want with this new uh, status that we introduce in version 8 um, and that will be introduced also for the other standards where this option is uh, possible for unannounced audits. Mm -hmm. So in case a company um, will have an unannounced audit, so long they will have these unannounced audits, they will be able to keep this status, which is a, a small star uh, close to the logo and also it appears uh, on the database. So every um, customer retailer can see directly that um, their supplier uh, went for an unannounced audit, not only for one year every three, but uh, for more consecutive uh, years. This is what we want to in encourage. Uh, so if there will be, again, an announced audit, then the status will be lost. OK, so it's, yeah, it's, a, it's uh, each time, each yes. time that you go from an, an, an announced to announced, it, the status is lost. Yes. And if you want to keep it, uh, then you, you have to, to keep the announced system. Yes, exactly. And I think it's fair, it's fair to say that uh, an announced audit is also, uh, for, in, in our view and in my view also, a, 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 it's a part of food safety culture mm -hmm. to, to encourage um, yeah, not totally. only the quality department, but all departments to, to work on all year long. Uh, on the on the maintenance of the of the system, of uh, course it's it's difficult from some companies. We know we are aware yeah. because uh, of course when you have limited uh, resources, uh, 
uh, people that are in vacation. Uh, we, we have special situations where it's complicated, but we also see um, the importance of it uh, that, uh, yeah, during a specific uh, time window, uh, the company can expect to have an, an audit and needs to be really, um, yeah, ready to, to explain to an auditor, uh, bring the records and so on. So it's an organ, it's really a preparation. Uh, uh, the, the site needs to be really prepared about that aspect. Yeah. That's a, but when it's done, I think then, yeah, maybe the, the site gets more used to. Yeah, and I think it's uh, you have to rethink the way you you explain things. How do how do I make make things understandable and sh and that they can that other colleagues can show exactly. potentially elements that otherwise you would keep uh, for yourself. So it's uh, I think that there's may, there are many examples of of benefits. Uh, but it's a good link with the food safety culture too. Yeah, yeah I agree. So. so well, people are waiting. Okay, okay, it's very nice. Uh, we know about IFS. We know about the certification protocol. Now, what about the checklist changes? <laughs> the checklist, the checklist yes. Uh, what about the audit changes? So, First change, uh, maybe in terms of numbers, always. Yeah. Uh, we have a few uh, less, uh, sorry, less um, requirements than in version 7. From 237, we have now 232 requirements. And we have only four new requirements, which is not a lot. Um, mm -hmm. In some new versions, we had more. Uh, why it's less and we have four new? It's because we have many that are merged some were mm. deleted, so uh, that it is reducing the number of the requirements. And and you have also reduced the number of chapters. Yes, we have five chapters instead of six. And why? Because uh, the IFS, uh, the, the sorry, the food defense, uh, which mm. is in chapter four, and it's for um, chapter uh, six uh, in version seven. It's four requirements that are moved to the chapter four in version eight. Closer so to we, food fraud, food defense. Yes, right? it's uh, re really after uh, food fraud, and we consider that we don't need a, a full new chapter only for four requirements. It can be a topic that is integrated in the operational part of the checklist. Mm. One one element which is interesting to, to mention is that uh, that makes IFS uh, the standard, uh, let's say, among the big four, uh, was the, the less number of requirements. That doesn't mean that it's not as strict as, but I think it's interesting in terms of uh, yes, auditing time uh, and, uh, and the management of uh, the reporting, of the audit, maybe too. The reporting yeah. and, and so on. So it's a uh, nice, good, uh, impressive uh, uh, achievement to, to reduce the standards when others are adding uh, more and more every every new version. Hey, it's a headache sometimes to, to really yeah. find where to place the, the right requirement. But yeah, we, we try not to repeat. Uh, it's also the advantage of the IFS uh, approach where it's really risk-based, uh, mm -hmm. maybe less prescriptive in some elements. Than, than we others, really, yeah. yeah, a company, uh, no matter what they produce, uh, they can really adapt the requirement according to their risk, uh, mm -hmm. the hazards they have. So... Um, yeah, I think this is a, an interesting way to, to see also the, the checklist. Okay. Uh, well, when you look at uh, the, the standard, you always start by the, sto the top, right? The management commitment. Mm -hmm. And there is something that you cannot oversee is the appearance or reappearance of sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, is, was this, uh, is there something new to expect is it just the start of integration of sustainability or why what did it why did it come back to mm -hmm. this uh... come back that's true yeah. that's true bruno because uh, uh, it was actually in this requirement this is the the corporate policy requirement and it was indeed uh, in uh, version 6.1 in yeah. uh, then uh, removed in version 7 because um, yeah we wanted to focus more on food safety but taking into consideration now all the, the legal background, the discussions about sustainability, the importance uh, of sustainability that, we, that is increasing uh, more and more, we uh, decided with our stakeholders uh, to really put it back uh, and really 
um, make the company aware that they need to consider also this aspect, apart from the food safety, product quality, legality, authenticity, the specifications, the food safety culture, the sustainability is also um, uh, an aspect the company uh, needs to consider in their corporate policy. Mm -hmm. At this stage, it's just in the policy, right? There is not; it's not an audit of sustainability. No, no, not at all. The the food standard really remains uh, in the scope uh, of uh, food safety. But policy. we developed another uh, program. Uh, this is mm -hmm. quite new, and and I think uh, we are really happy about that. It's the EFS ESG check we are calling, mm -hmm. uh, and this can be really added at the end of a, um, an IFS audit. So it can be mm -hmm. some additional hours added. Uh, to a regular IFS audit, uh, which is really focusing on ESG aspects. And there can be some modules like uh, carbon footprint module and some others will follow. So we really encourage also people to get into this program um, because it's the, the same logic as we have in our standards also in this aspect. So it can be really um, yeah, way uh, well understood by the companies who are familiar already with IFS. Mm. Yeah, and it's also a um, sort of self-assessment uh, yes, tool. Right? The yes, the approach. Yes, exactly. Like the global markets where you can self-assess yourself. There is one part. Can... Yeah, exactly. A self-assessment, and then the uh, the the auditor will check on site this information. And the approach is really not to. There are no KOs. The, this is not the scoring system. There, the, really, uh, we we try to um, um, have the 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 increase in the improvement. The, mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, it's encouraging with the result the companies to win more experience on that aspect. Mm -hmm. That's great, 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 great point. Uh, of course, there is also also another one more, which is a very important topic for sure, but all, which was already integrated in the IFS, uh, which is about the food safety culture, mm -hmm. where there were also changes. Right, uh, we have seen it in the, in the objectives. There are something that you have define more clearly, I think. Yes. Yes, the food safety culture still appears um, as a term in two requirements. So this is unchanged, uh, like in version 7, it's in the corporate policy and in the management review. So always uh, in uh, the, the management part, the senior management part, because this is where it should start from. Uh, we still have the same definition. The difference in version 8 is that in the corporate policy, we are now asking very clearly uh, that objectives need to be defined for each of the four pillars of the definition. So, for example, the communication, the training, the employee feedback, in case they observed some uh, issues, the performance measurement, for all these four aspects, objectives uh, needs to be clearly defined and then be able to demonstrate what is really uh, done according to these yeah. objectives. Okay, so it, yeah, it sets the, the rule clearer. What do I need to do? So if I want to have a, an effective food safety culture program, uh, I have to work on communication, on training, on employee feedback. Exactly. Performance measurement at the minimum, because of course yes. there are other aspects that can be added, uh, added to that. And this is an example of uh, uh, of the, the improvement we have from one version to the other because we introduced food safety culture. We uh, saw what were the difficulties uh, for the auditors. It was difficult to assess this aspect for the company, sometimes difficult and still difficult to understand yeah. what they really need. It's a term. It's a... It's difficult to really uh, understand how much culture a company has uh, in one aspect. So um, with this new version, uh, we go more uh, into the details about what we expect mm -hmm. for the food safety culture. And what about the new, 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 new requirements? So there yes. are the four new. Yeah, four new requirements. So that's not that much. Um, mm -hmm. The first one is really um, related to the codex so it's in the chapter two um, the second one yeah maybe we, we can go yeah. through uh, I think we have them so we, yeah, we can see right. them uh, yes the, the this one is really the one about the codex uh, the change here we added the procedures of validation uh, which was not uh, requested in version 7, um, including the revalidation after any modification. So this is really related to the HACCP part. Yeah. And also just a validation, also I think it's very important, after modification. 
Yes. And, and it's done before. So that means it's you have a modification, you validate before implementing it. It's not the same than verification. Verification is really... Exactly. And uh, in the glossary, we differentiated even more clear those two definitions yeah. that are taken from the so codex. That's, that's important. The, the second one is about chemicals, I think. Yes, chemicals. In the chapter four, um, we have uh, requirements already about uh, the cleaning disinfection um, chemicals that are used in the company, but we didn't have one more general about all the chemicals that can be found uh, in a company. Uh, so sometimes auditors didn't know where to raise uh, this when something was observed. So we have now a dedicated requirement about that in Chapter 4. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one is about environmental monitoring. Yes. Where you're more specifically asking for... Yes, here we are asking criteria. that uh, crit um, yes, criteria for the environmental monitoring program uh, needs to be documented, implemented and maintained. So uh, really the, the three aspects, uh, as we can see in the wording, um, yeah, need to, to be fulfilled, yes. Yeah. Uh, and this is also a GFSI requirement. Yeah, and that means also criteria means that you have to explain why, based on which criteria, you chose to 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 execute this environmental monitoring and not another one, right? Is the, yes, exactly. The risk analysis and, and what are the mm -hmm. criteria that you use to to make sure that the, it's uh, adapted? This is, yeah, behind. Mm -hmm. And the last one, then, oh, yeah, the, there is one about corrections. Yes, still in chapter five, and here, um, yes, now that we have the, the the corrections integrated, we have one dedicated requirement about where deviations, non-conformities are identified. The corrections need to be implemented. So this is more into the what was added new in in terms of the action plan. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the, the part about uh, wording, and when I wrote, uh, I read the the IFS, I, I realized, if I, I noticed that actually. There are like small changes, but that are very important in terms of maybe if you can explain it. But it looks like really you you are more asking for the effectiveness of an implementation that sometimes it was written before are in place and that disappears, right? It's not just yes. having a procedure or having a process, but that uh, okay, yeah. Yes, the term in uh, something needs to be in place was yeah. not really well understood uh, from the companies in terms of what do they need really to, to have in place, uh, do they need to have it documented or not. And for the auditors, it was opening the door to a lot of discussions with the sites because, uh, yes, they were saying you don't have it documented. Uh, the company was saying, okay, but I have it in place. So it was really... Uh, uh, yeah, hen and egg uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. So uh, here we, we defined uh, with more clear uh, wording uh, what is really expected. By documented now, it's very clear. It needs to be somewhere written what is um, in the procedure. Implemented, this, needs, this means clearly that it needs to be done, what is written in the procedure. And maintained, really, that it needs to be frequently uh, reviewed. Uh, uh, and, and yes, always having in mind the continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. That's, um, so it's, yeah, it's really clear, documented, implemented, and uh, maintained. And I think that this is the three elements that we should ask ourselves, OK, this procedure is it is it documented? Is it really done, or and how how do I review it, and how do we make sure that uh, how that often? Uh, yes, continuous exactly. improvement. Oh, clear enough. There is also a lot about timing. Maybe you can explain. I think it it's, it sounds strange, but I think it has it has of course a, a story behind it, right? When it is year, yes. yearly, uh, people sometimes don't understand exactly what it means. Exactly. This morning as well, I had some discussions. Uh, when it's written annually, it's sometimes complicated because uh, we have a specific window for the performance of the audit. Uh, it's not always one year, one audit. Uh, it can happen that uh, in one year we have two audits if, if the windows were very uh, close. So uh, biannually, sometimes it was tricky to understand uh, what needs to be checked, when need, it needs to be um, reviewed. So now we define it by months. Uh, we say that it needs to be every 12th month uh, reviewed. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And also, or when, whenever significant changes occur, uh, so more often can be. Uh, and we have in three requirements in the management review, the internal audit and the, the test for the procedure of recall and withdrawal uh, incidents. Uh, we have a, another wording that says that within 12 months, it needs to be planned and um, it, this execution, so the realization of uh, of whatever of the management review shall not exceed 15 months. So we add the flexibility of three additional months for its execution. So that's okay. not so bad. So, no, just, <laughs> but, but that means that you cannot do a plan of internal audit in January uh, 2024 and execute it in December 2025. <laughs> Yes, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's that, very clear, but uh, that yeah. Could and that could happen sometimes. Yes. Yeah, there are these kind of, um, of mistakes. Uh, just a comment maybe to, to the audience. Some of you have posted some questions. Don't hesitate if you have some questions, but to to uh, to put it on the comments and, and we'll try to, to deal with some of them. And, and after, um, after this webinar, uh, Krisa, I, and, and the people from IFS will be I think please to 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 ask to to answer to to this uh, to this question uh, one by one then in uh, in the linkedin um ko requirements no big changes right or yes we, we still have 10 ko requirements yeah, there yeah. are some changes we exchange the order for some uh, uh, and there are some with more important changes uh, the traceability and the internal audits are ah, yeah. some of them Yes, exactly. Here uh, about the traceability, uh, we really consider, as I said at the beginning, uh, the feedbacks and the difficulties with the previous version. Uh, and we don't have any more what we had in this requirement, uh, the primary packaging. There were a lot of discussions about what are expected for this type of products and so on. So in this specific requirement, we are more prescriptive now because we say that the food contact packaging materials, other materials carrying legal uh, or uh, relevant food safety information. So it's very precise Perfect. what we mean. Mm -hmm. And we can also see here the documented, implemented and maintained that was not yeah. uh, before. Which means that somehow, potentially, if it's documented, implemented, but not maintained, right? That there is a yeah, there can a, be a, a deviation. Yeah, yeah. There can be a deviation. Also important. And in terms of internal audits, is something also there? Well, there was yes. a, a change. Ah, well, yeah. Yes, but this one is an important. Yeah, it's the wording we we explained just before. Um, the difference uh, from version seven is that now we are asking to have an internal audit uh, every twelve months, uh, uh, fifteen months maximum, for mm -hmm. for all the checklist uh, of the IFS food. So not only for the the requirements uh, related to food safety and quality, but also for for all the the different chapters. Uh, and if uh, there is a risk assessment performed where there are critical um, uh, points about the food safety and the product quality, this needs to be even more frequent. Yeah. So this requirement is a bit more strict uh, yeah. and it was decided with the different yeah. stakeholders. So it's minimum it's, it should be reviewed at if I internal audit every 12 month minimum, mm -hmm. more if it's more risky. And yes. that's true that previously it was not that clear. Yes. And also with this window and not exceed 15 months. Yes. So basically, exactly. if, we, if you exceed 15 months, there is a risk of uh, losing the certification. Yes, it's a KO then. It's, yeah, it's, it's a KO. Hmm. Quite clear, quite clear. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, uh, of course, what about the timeline? Because it's uh, just, we, you published it some weeks ago, right? In, uh, in April? Yes, it's very fresh. Uh, very uh, we published in April and um, the, the, the first audit, according to this version, will be possible from the 1st of October and it will be mandatory from the 1st of January. So we mm -hmm. always leave this uh, window of six months uh, until the first audit is possible and nine months in total until it becomes mandatory yeah. for several reasons, because the companies need some time to, 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 to get familiar with the changes, the certification body to update all their processes and the accreditation as well uh, to, to get uh, the different certification bodies accredited to the new version. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, so you have to, there are not that many changes, but I think the uh, the German said the devil uh, lays in the it's details. In the, so I think yeah. it it requires to reread um, the the requirements and to reassess the system in in this uh, aspect of effectiveness. Uh, as you said, is it imp is it documented? Is it implemented? Is it maintained? Uh, yes. Do I follow the, the some the key questions? Yeah. yeah. To to to, uh, to review it. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, I think we've done the round of um, uh, about the uh, part. Of course, there, there would be other things to to that we could say, but we have a limited time. Uh, maybe just to to finalize before the questions, there are. I think it's also important that people understand that there are a lot of tools that uh, IFS propose to uh, to support certified business, but also uh, businesses which are. Uh, entering right, there are a lot of, of, of documents that are free of charge for anyone on, on your website. Yes, exactly. And I, I, I also encourage everybody to have a look in our website, which is new. Uh, we published it uh, in the last weeks. Uh, it's also available in the main languages, so it's uh, it's really easy to find the different information. And we provide also in the website uh, some guidelines which are for free um, mm. and are really there is really one that uh, comes to my mind because it's the the one that uh, was really uh, sent to a lot of LinkedIn posts uh, about the pest control yeah. uh, guideline. Uh, there will be also some for the packaging, for example. Uh, we have also for the food defense. So there are really sure. several topics mm. we try to develop. It's not a normative document, so it's not uh, a must, uh, something that the company 100% uh, needs to follow, but it's really explaining uh, and, and can support the companies to understand some very technical aspects behind yeah, it's, not, it's not normative. That means that the auditor cannot say, oh, you haven't implemented uh, this approach, which is in the IFS pest control yes. or foreign body or food fraud. It's a deviation. That's not, that's not true. Yes. That's well, that what is clear what needs to be clear is the standard and the doctrines are the normative documents. Yeah. So uh, the guidelines are some supports, uh, guidance uh, about some specific topics, but there cannot be a deviation according to a guideline explanation, yeah. for example. Uh, we we do not have much time to to talk about, but for, personally, I'm for years, I'm very fan of the IFS Audit Manager app that. Unfortunately, not of, a lot of people know about, even people who are certified uh, IFS, and which allows you <coughs> to, to do your internal audits, yeah. uh, even for other standards, because it's what you, what you see. The advantage, of course, is about IFS that you can relate it to the specific requirements of the... Of yes, the and... that's a very good tool. Uh, again, it can be downloaded for free on an, uh, a, ta uh, um, a tab or uh, the, the, the phone and we can find the different checklists so we can perform the internal audit, uh, register some information. And it's good to know that IFS doesn't have access to this information. So that's yeah. also important. It's really an internal audit that the company uh, can perform, assess, uh, make a, really a self-assessment, and uh, that uh, that is really easy of use. Yeah, right. And you can also do notes. I know that I, I tested it myself, uh, audios, photos. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's. I, I'm sure that it will improve in the in the coming years. I don't want to talk yes, about. Yes, I hope it's yeah. really a, a good tool, and I, I agree that it's not so uh, famous uh, so far. No, no. It's uh, and, and it's and it's free. It's things that are free are sometimes attractive, but it's it's good. It's not only free; it's good. There is actually, if they want people to pay, it's also possible to have <laughs> a, another option which is more sophisticated and allows some additional uh, things. But for sure, the the, the, the all the, the basic fee. needed information are for free. Yeah, that's great. Great thing. So there are a lot of things which are, of course, some elements are are restricted to the companies who ha are certified uh, by IFS. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, for example, the trend risk uh, yeah. uh, part, uh, when we, uh, when a company really registers on the database, there is one uh, 
page uh, which appears, uh, which is a great tool. I really like it because yeah. we can see uh, live information uh, about uh, RAS uh, notification. Yeah. Uh, we can go into the details, some EU uh, regulation updates and so on. Uh, and this is really for the users uh, yeah. of the, the IFS database. So this is also a push to to go in, in the direction of IFS, uh, depending, of course, on the market you are you are in. But it's a... Uh, it's really great all this uh, this uh, free material to help uh, the companies to to deliver. Yes, exactly. And maybe we can check some questions. I don't know. If, yeah, yeah. It's uh, this is the the invitation to to stay connected to to AFS. Uh. Yes, uh, we post a lot of information on LinkedIn, so it's quite useful to to follow the page. And yes, all the newsletters as well. We provide some fresh news there. So we will check uh, shortly the questions we have. Uh, I saw one. Oh, one second, give me. Da, da, da. Can we get the recording of the of this webinar? Uh, yes, it will be available on the on on the the same uh, place where you are looking at it. Um, an auditor says that he has a training. Uh, calibration training uh, the 29th and 30th of June. Will it be according to version 8? Uh, no. Um, the calibration training purpose for the auditors is every two years to calibrate themselves uh, according to some specific case studies that are prepared, uh, how they score those case studies and so on. It will be adapted a bit later according to version 8, but this can be really checked uh, directly with uh, the specific department, the auditor management. Yeah, and I think that the CBs uh, have to do a training, right, of their auditors according to the new version. Yes, yes, there, there is, uh, we already had several sessions of train the trainer trainings yeah. uh, with uh, the trainers of the CBs who will train after internally the different auditors. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a question from Cesar. Are there any plans to increase IFS food presence in the USA? <laughs> it's a bit of strategic. Yes, yeah, always interesting questions. Um, for sure, it's, it's an important market for us and we have some standards that are uh, really developed there, the, the, the logistics, the pack secure. So um, we, we have also representatives uh, mm -hmm. in the US uh, and this is very important to us to spread uh, the information, to perform training. So yeah, this is uh, really something we pay attention to and we, we will try to grow even more. Yeah, there is a question a bit in the same uh, direction. Is is there local um, uh, representation in Asia Pacific region? I know there is a representative in China, right? In China, we have yeah. uh, in China exactly, uh, and actually our managing director was uh, in China uh, until yes. yesterday, I think. Uh, and there was a big, big uh, focus day there with more than four hundred participants. So. Uh, it was really a success, and yes, there there is also a lot of interest there. Okay, to participate in IFS Food Working Group, uh, but there need there, there need there needs to be a uh, working group established in the country. Yes, uh, exactly. People that are interesting can contact us, but it's true that uh, we limit it to some countries uh, and uh, there are also country leaders in our teams uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we can decide together uh, about the members yeah, who, who can join the, the different working groups. But of course, right. we, we are interested for people. Yeah, so so if, to... it's, if someone would like to be in IFS working group, he can submit the, the question and Yes, you will, you will answer yes. uh, by no so either yes, great, or not promising or, that it's uh, promising hundred percent possible, it's... but it's for sure something that we really welcome. Okay. Um, hmm. Are there any guidelines for implementing the food safety culture program? Mm. We have any learning about the food safety culture. Uh, mm -hmm. which uh, is uh, available on, on the website. Uh, there is a fee, but it's not a, a lot. I think it's around 100 euros. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yes, we have one fact sheet as well where we explain, but we, we don't have a specific guideline. 
Mm -hmm. And there is another, yeah, a lot of auditors. Uh, <laughs> um, if the IFS, are, are, when do you do you know when the uh, IFS exam, according to the new version, will then uh, start? Yes, uh, it will be uh, in September. By the end of the year, in September, I think, if I'm not wrong about the the month, it's from that day on that will it will be a hard cut uh, from the previous. Uh, version material to the new version okay great okay well if you have again if we haven't answered to the, to your question we will we will look at it um and and if you have also questions while you are looking uh, at the replay but don't hesitate to to use the the comments uh, and we will of course uh, um, especially Krisa, the team and and myself uh, when i can <laughs> answer answer to them Uh, so thank you very much, Krista, for for this time with us. Thank you, Bruno, for the invitation. It was a pleasure, and I hope it was interesting. And we'll be happy to answer uh, to the re request we got. Yeah, and and on your website you have always the contact uh, details, so you can. Uh, I think it's also good to know that IFS is available and reachable uh, when there are some uh, some some issues. So thank you all. I leave you my contact detail in case you have uh, questions about uh, IFS uh, trainings and, uh, and any questions that you may have. Uh, please uh, reach, uh, reach to us to, in the LinkedIn, uh, also the IFS web uh, LinkedIn page uh, or personal LinkedIn page. I think it's, it's important in a food safety environment to, to grow the network in, in order to, uh, to learn from each other. It's not just about following people and <laughs> and copy pasting posts of people. No, it's really about sharing sharing experience. And uh, thank you all. Uh, we thank have some you very much from people. Wow, <laughs> very relevant, interesting. Thank you so much. Can we let mail for the certificate? Well, the mail. We will answer this question about about certificates. And uh, thank you all all of you. And uh, see you soon.